Wonderful. It's uh, it's great to be with you, Church. Hope you're hope you're all well. And um, that passage that that Ali just read for us is is I probably feel like I genuinely say this every time I ever do any form of talk, but it is one of my favourite passages in the Bible. It's such an amazing passage, and it's we're going to look at it for a few minutes now. It's it's incredibly relevant for today um, and what we're going through, and just I guess it's always relevant. But we're going to look at that together. So let me just say a very quick prayer, and then we'll jump in. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the great, um, the great waking up uh, agent in the world, that you are the great dry bones um, remover and flesh former and breath breather. Holy Spirit, I pray for each of us now that we would have your breath breathe on us, that it has already breathed on each one of us. The Holy Spirit has encountered us throughout our whole lives, Lord, but again today. Would, would you breathe into us? Would you revive us? And would you not just stop there, Lord, but would you use us to be agents of revival, people who speak your, your reviving over this nation and even beyond, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. So, yeah, this is a wonderful passage, but I want to begin by telling you a story uh, that actually something that happened to me last Friday, so just over a week ago, and it kind of is an interesting backdrop on this this passage that we're reading. So last Friday evening, um, it was about 10.30 p.m., I was just about to go to sleep, go to bed, and um, just before I went to bed, I just sort of thought, hey, it'd be nice to spend a bit bit of time just with God. So I was just, I think, lying in bed, and Ali was lying in bed, and I was like, let's just put some worship on. So we, I, I think I got a YouTube, um, some worship up, and I literally just lay there in bed, just kind of not being overtly spiritual, other than just saying, I want to cast my attention to Jesus. So I was just like focusing on Jesus, literally lying, you can imagine, flat out, li- lying on a bed, listening to this worship. And about a couple of minutes into just sort of doing that, I started to have this amazing encounter that um, I've never had something quite like this before, where I just my my whole body started to shake um, as I felt the sense of the Holy Spirit just come come over me. But in in a real kind of it is I feel like I've heard people try and share these sort of things before. It's hard to describe, but almost like an electricity or like a sense of the energy of the Holy Spirit come into me, and my whole body like was just shaking. And I was aware enough to be like, "Wow, Ali's like." just lying like two feet away from me. I wonder what she's thinking. But and, and so my whole body was like shaking. Um, and it, this, this, and I, it felt like a good shaking. It felt like a really like, not a, oh my word, but like a, I knew I wasn't in control, but it was wonderful, if that makes sense. And just, and the, I felt God say two things to me. The first thing I felt God say is actually, I felt God lead me to repent over wanting to seek influence or seek significance. You know how we all are, are significant, but sometimes we can seek in, in unhealthy ways to do that. And I just felt God kind of brought that to mind. So I just said, sorry to God. And then the second thing I felt God speak to me as this 20 minutes of this going on, I just heard the, the Holy Spirit say, I'm ordaining your steps, which, which obviously for me was a great encouragement. And it was an amazing encounter. The main reason I've shown that is because I just want to encourage each of us that God is breathing on us in this time. And actually, that encounter wasn't at an amazing conference, you know, at New Wine or whatever our favorite conference might be. It was just me in my bedroom, just and, and I wasn't being especially doing anything. You know, I wasn't in the middle of a fasting three days, this or that. I was just casting my attention to God. And I genuinely believe something of the reviving of God came into my into our room and into, into, into me for 20 minutes. Um, and I want to encourage you, God wants to do that in this time. Um, and this is the passage, one of the great passages which speak about God just coming and breathing and doing something outside of our outside of the norm. This certainly was outside of the norm for me. Um, and just final point on that before we begin looking at the passage. I love the idea that my pursuit of Jesus would be biblical. We've talked about the Bible quite a lot already in this in this service, which is great. And, that, and actually, you know, sometimes like, well, is that biblical? And I've asked myself that. The funny thing was the next day, so Saturday, I was in my like usual bible time i i often go through a few chunks of the bible at a time and so i was i was due to read proverbs 28 and this is this is what it says which really struck out to me Pro, proverbs 28 verse 14 says blessed is the one who always trembles before god but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble and it, i was just like 
just right there in the Bible, there's a thing that, that literally God's saying, actually, it's blessed if you, you know, whether you tremble yourself or actually you feel God like ordained you to tremble, like that is a good thing. And I thought the other thing is so powerful, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. So my prayer for us today is that we would have our hearts totally unhardened, totally, totally um, open to all God wants to do. Okay. So let's quickly look at this passage then. So I want to make four points from, from this amazing passage, which we've probably all looked at before. But the first point is this, is that we are called to match our faith levels with Jesus. Match your faith levels with Jesus. So we know the beginning, it starts this picture that Ezekiel has this vision of dry bones and um, just absolute decay. It's a picture of death that you almost the prime picture we see in the Bible. And that's what Ezekiel is shown by God, by the spirit. And then there's that amazing point where God says in verse three, God asks, son of man, can these bones live? So he sees this horrible, hopeless picture, I guess far more hopeless than a coronavirus hit UK or anything like that, much, much bleaker. And, and he hears God say, son of man, can these bones live? And what I love is Ezekiel says, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And I was thinking about this this week. What When he said that first, what does that mean? Sovereign Lord, you alone know. But actually what's interesting is most of the time he references God as just Lord. But in this chunk, he calls him sovereign Lord. Sovereign, that word in, in, the, in the Hebrew is like the word like master or one who's in charge. Like it's, and so he says, so sovereign Lord, which is like the word kind of for Yahweh. So he, he's basically his first response to this picture and him being asked, can anything be done about these bones is, God, you have the power. Like you have the power. And then he says, you alone know. And I actually think that's a really powerful response and something we can learn from is actually Ezekiel sees something totally bleak. And his answer is he recognizes God as the sovereign one, the powerful one. And he says, you know, so if you can, do, if you want to do it, it will happen. And actually, I think that's a really powerful thing for us to incorporate into our lives. Like in every area of our lives, have our faith expectations to be what Jesus is are. Like, don't just say, I see bones. So that's what's going to, you know, that's just the reality. No, actually, he says, Jesus, what you do will happen. And actually, there's a real like significance to setting our expectations and our faith to what Jesus is doing, because Jesus is always moving. Um, and so today, whatever our lives might be like, we people are going through some really hard things. I loved what Abby shared about how God's been with her, but through really hard times. And as Christians, we're not called to pretend life is always easy. But the wonderful thing is when things are hard, in fact, this passage would tell us when things are particularly hard, that actually in those times, God has an amazing plan. We're also going to read what his amazing plan is. But it's in the time when it feels bad that God's got this amazing plan. And we don't ignore reality, but we also try and have our faith, which is you know unseen. It's a substance, but it's unseen. Match our faith with Jesus. So that's my encouragement for you and me today. Set your faith about how God wants to move in your family. Maybe those that don't know Jesus, set them to be, God, what are you doing today? Set your levels there. For maybe, maybe like stuff's hard with your, your like income and things like that. Have an expectation, actually, that God wants to breathe on you. Um, and so match your faith levels with Jesus. That's the first point. OK, second point is second point is to pursue God's reality and God's purposes at all times. Pursue God's reality and God's purposes at all times. So God, Ezekiel's been asked his first questions. He's seen the valley of dry bones and decay. God said, can these bones live? Ezekiel says, you, you sovereign Lord, know. And then verse four, it says, then he said to me, and God said to me, prophesy to these bones, say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I just think that's so interesting that I another thing that I've reflected on this passage that I've read a lot of times is that God is doing something even when the bones are there. So so Ezekiel is in the middle of a vision of bones, of decay, of death. And if it was you or me, I might have seen that. If I don't know if God transported us to see an amazing picture like that today, a vision like that. Then if I was just thinking of my own strength, maybe I'd be like, oh, this is really sad. There's bones all over this valley. Like maybe the loving thing, the good thing to do, I should like start cleaning them up. Maybe I should start to tidy this valley. Maybe I should start to like 
bury all these bones. Like they would all be good, I, I would suggest Christian responses and not necessarily bad things to do. But actually the reality is that would be a natural response. Whereas when he asks, when he continues his engagement with God, God is doing something way better, bigger, more amazing, which is he's gonna make breath into them and bring them to life. And so what I love about that is that, again, for us today in our lives, but also I feel like for the nation, like God's re- God's doing a reality. There's a reality that God is ordaining right now. You know, I had that word, I'm ordaining your steps. I believe that's true for the UK. God is ordaining something right now that is not what we're seeing fully. Maybe we're seeing bits of it, but actually we need to pursue that reality. Don't be ignorant to our natural reality, but actually ask God, God, what is your reality? What are your purposes right now? And so I encourage us, something I'm trying to learn is to not just be an expert in seeing the natural reality around me or even seeing, and I'll be honest, in my own like state, complaining about my reality, which you might not know, but we're in the middle of having to work out some visas for Ali. And there's just like, there's enough things that I'm like, this is painful. This is lengthy. Why should I have to do a very complex like visa for, for, for my wife? Like that seems just bizarre. Like, but actually you're like, God's doing something. There's a God reality behind everything. And and just complaining doesn't really help, for one. But actually, God's doing something really good behind it. And so I encourage you that that will be true for you. And also, I totally believe with all my heart that's true for the nation. And that's true for the church today. So we are called to pursue God's reality. How do we mainly do that? I think by listening, by listening to the Holy Spirit, by engaging and saying, God, what are you doing? I'm trying to learn more and more to ask God specific questions like, God, what are you doing in this situation? What are you doing about my visa situation? What are you doing in our church today? Ask God those questions and then listen, because it's all listening. If Ezekiel just started cleaning up the bones, or if Ezekiel had just said, son of man, can these bones live? And he just wasn't listening. It probably wouldn't have had the rest of this passage. But because he does, he hears, and he then becomes part of what God's doing. So pursue God's reality and purposes at all times, because at all times, as we sang in that first song, he's doing good at all times. I thought I'd do this. We're halfway through. This is fun. You don't have to do this. But if we were at church, we would do this. So if you can stand up, I don't know if this is going to work, um, but I let's a bit of normality. We all like that. So let's stand up if you can and just reach up nice and high. If, if this is your first time tuning in, you won't have any context for this, but I like to do this quite regularly. Okay, then, then lean down to the bottom. Oh, try and touch your toes if you can. Oh, I'm not very supple right now. Then probably go out wide. This is just helping to reset us. And the final thing, which is length of this passage, just give yourselves, give your bones a little shake. Shake those bones. <laughs> I probably look like an idiot. There you go. And then let's sit down again. Okay. We don't even need to explain that. That was just helpful for our, um, for our bodies. Okay. So we're two, two points in, two to go. So the third point, and you could make so many points in this passage, but the third point is this, is that we're called to boldly prophesy revival by the Spirit. Boldly prophesy revival by the Spirit. So Ezekiel has um, matched his level of faith with Jesus, said, God, if you're doing it, then it will happen. Ezekiel has listened. He's responded to God's reality. He's been listening. And then the next thing is he's then called to actually speak, boldly prophesy revival. So then verse 7, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. This is Ezekiel. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And then bones came together. Um, There was a noise, a rattling sound. The bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and skin covered them and flesh appeared on them, but there was no breath in them. And then in verse 10, after these bones come to life and there's this amazing rattling of bones, they come together, they form actual body parts. There's many of them and there's flesh, but there's still no breath. Again, God says, God, he listens to God. God, you've done part of it, but you've not done all of it. And then in verse, so so then God says, so breathe. So now prophesy the breath. And in verse 10, it says, so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. And so what's really interesting there again is that Ezekiel, like God's reality, God's doing something. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. But actually, it's not coming to fruition in this vision until Ezekiel actually does the bold praying, the bold speaking, the bold prophesying. And and that's so interesting to me because 
God can do it without us. And I think sometimes in life, God, God does things that we don't ordain. We, we're not involved in. It's just God's goodness. But a massive thing that he loves to do is to involve us and be engaged with us. And actually, I genuinely believe that there are things that God wants to do in this nation and with the church right now, when we're in a very unusual situation, they'll only come as we prophesy and pray out by the spirit, the reviving and the specific things that God's doing. Um, and I thought one key about this is that actually the reviving of the bones and the, the rope, like them coming back to life, it isn't actually of Ezekiel's work. It's of the Holy Spirit's work, but it's Ezekiel that has to do the speaking. So there, uh, any reviving doesn't actually, it's not Johnny brought revival or, or whoever brought revival. It's the Holy Spirit brings the revival, but actually we physically have a real important role of, of seeking God and then speaking it out and prophesying out, God, you are wanting to do this. Um, it's a bit like if we ever pray for healing, like we, we, we're the point of people who speak it out, but it, it's not us doing it because we can do anything. Um, it's God that meets us. And I want to again, encourage us for you, for me today. What does it look like? What is God trying to ask us to speak life over that actually he's been planning to do? I really believe that God wants to bring people to know Jesus in this time. I believe that God really wants to like reinvigorate his church in this time. And I'm really praying a lot of prayers like that, but there'll be specific ones for each of us. And my encouragement to you and to me, boldly prophesy, like listen to the Holy Spirit, because again, he's speaking out the words, Ezekiel interestingly speaks out, not his own words, he speaks out God's words. So he prophesied as he commanded me. So me just saying, right now, God wants to make the UK the wealthiest nation in the world. Like, that is just a total thing that's coming to my head. I mean, it's vaguely could be God, but but I very much doubt it because actually it needs to be what the what the Holy Spirit is doing, what the Holy Spirit is saying. And that's when the life comes, but we do the speaking. So again, I encourage you, I encourage me, be listening and then be speaking and be prophesying. Um, and again, Ezekiel had to actually do it multiple times. That's the other interesting thing. He didn't do it just once. The first time the flesh came, a great stuff was happening. Bones were rattling. It was all good, but actually there was no breath. So there was no actual purpose until he did it again. So often we do have to like pray out, boldly declare, boldly prophesy what God's doing um, multiple times. And that's what Ezekiel 37 teaches us. So again, like, what is God calling you? Like, what are there things in your life that God is saying, hey, if just Roman, if just Heather were to were to spend time listening to me, then I, I would love to see this happen in their families. I'd love to see this happen in, in over London. I genuinely believe that all of us have that, that sort of thing that God is trying to speak to us and engage with us to do. Um, and also, we have probably more time than ever, hopefully, not all of us, to do that now. Um, so, so speak those words out. And may they be words of God and words really from the Bible, because the Bible is a great way to begin. Um, that's how we know we're speaking, praying out God's words. OK, final point. Hopefully we're all doing OK. Final point is this. Choose to be part of God's resurrection army. Choose to be part of God's resurrection army. So this amazing thing has come to pass. Um, he's been listening to God, Ezekiel, and then he prophesies. Breath enters them. They stand up. Verse 10, they stand on their feet, a vast army. So the purpose then is explained right at the end. Sometimes we don't know the purposes of God. We know God's doing something, but... I. None of us were aware probably until verse 10 that it was an army he was bringing. Um, but then the purpose comes. But actually, again, what's so interesting is a vast army. And if you read verse um, 12, he then goes on to God explains a bit more of the, the purpose. He says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And so, and then in verse 14, he says, I will settle you in your own land. And so the purpose of, of, of this vision that we, that we read in Ezekiel 37 is God's forming an army, a resurrected army that is then to meant to inherit the land, that you would, you would go back into your land. And obviously this is a prophecy that had a context of the time for the Old, for the Old Testament and what God was doing with the people of Israel. Um, but one thing that's really interesting is Ezekiel is actually prophesying over himself he doesn't realize till the end. So Ezekiel is part of Israel. And it's not until he probably this has happened that he said, actually, this these dry bones are the dry bones of Israel. So he is actually prophesying stuff out that then actually he is a little part of. And one thought about that is that when we speak out, God, would you just bring like my neighborhood to know Jesus? Would you do would you like really come and move here? You're actually doing that, speaking that over yourself. And I 
what's great about God is he often hunts us down with our prayers and they come true for us, even if we're prophesying them or speaking them over a, a, a greater range of, of things or people. So that's one interesting point. But again, the, ar the army has a purpose and it's to inherit the land. But what I love about that, what's interesting is once the army is formed, presumably, this is like thinking into the future, but presumably the army actually then has to start inheriting the land. Like they actually need to start operating like an army. And so what I just, what is cool about that is that this, I believe this passage teaches us about revival, that we do it a lot through listening to God, praying, being on our knees, speaking out. But then we choose to be part of the army that God's doing. Then we actually choose to engage, be, be that soldier and inherit the land. And, and I just encourage us and I'm excited about what the inheriting of that looks like in this in this time and I think a lot of it looks like what we're doing having really as best as we can community via zoom skype and really like trying to strengthen one another that's part of how we inherit the land but I also think God wants us to be thinking about okay when normality returns or when we return to a greater normality like how are we invigorated what has God been doing in us that allows us to again be like, okay, I feel prepared, like me in that bed, I feel almost charged up by God's spirit to then to then actually inherit the land and be a bit bolder. Like when I go to my, fish, this is my personal belief for myself, going to the next, next time I go to the fish and chip shop, I'm gonna be a little bit bolder when I'm actually in there and it's a level of normality. Cause I'm like, wow, society has just had a horrible shaking and breaking. Like the least I can do is maybe be a little bit more bold because actually that's a way that this person might encounter something of Jesus. And so I encourage you that choose to be part of God's army, choose to like engage um, and choose to, to know that you've been called to inherit the land, like you've been called to be a part of seeing God's kingdom in, in the inheritance of God's kingdom come. That's why we pray, you know, our father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I guess to, as a final thought, and then I'm going to finish in a prayer. It's interesting that I don't know if you've noticed, but the government slogans are kind of slightly at the moment appealing to a little bit of wartime, like, you know, do this, support the NHS, da, 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 which is all really good and valuable. But it's interesting that there's this slightly like wartime, like join the join the battle. And, and I think that's they that's interesting and not necessarily a bad thing. But actually, it's cool that Ezekiel 37, because we are each here are dry bones that have been brought to life by Jesus. Like that's what the church is, dry bones that then were resurrected. Um, because of that, we um, have been enlisted to an important, even more important war cause or army cause or purpose than that, than, than Boris Johnson could have us do, which is to actually be part of his resurrected army to inherit the land. Like that is our future. That is the reality we're walking in. Um, and, and actually we need to be part of that as well. So there's a choosing of that. Okay, I've just whistled through some of the things that I've seen in Ezekiel 37 there, and, uh, and I hope God's been speaking us a bit through that. But I want to finish by just doing a bit of a response, because I think we've got we to allow God to breathe on us when we're looking at this sort of a passage. Otherwise, it's just words, really. Um, so if we all want to close our eyes, um, and I, I just, when I was just praying about how we should do a response and how you do it via Zoom, I just felt like it would be a valuable thing that God might want to, again, just specifically breathe on on us in this time and so i sometimes i think there's a value in, in changing position so i'm so if 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 you feel god stirred you in any way just as we've been looking at this passage anything like this sense of talking about god bringing dead things to life or reviving things if you feel any sort of stirring in yourself as you as we've been talking about this i encourage you just to wherever you are just to stand up and i'm gonna just just as an act of moving out of our our sitting position and i'm gonna pray for the holy spirit to just just to come and breathe on us again and 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 spark his his call to be to know life and to speak life over others um to, to like into fruition so if you feel something like god has stirred in you um then then please do stand and we're going to pray and even if you don't <laughs> if you didn't feel particularly moved by anything but you're like actually i want to see dead things come to life i want to see my fear come into life i want to see my family like my one of the burns i have family that don't know jesus i really want to see them come to life then again i encourage you just stand up and i'm just gonna just as an active response and we're gonna just pray together and ask the holy spirit to come and breathe um so yeah if that's you just just as a as a sort of an act why don't you do that just stand and, and i'm just going to pray that the holy spirit might come and breathe us so if you want when you're in the room you're in you can be praying too um but let's just ask for maybe a minute and a half two minutes for the holy spirit to come and remain
So let's pray. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are the great life breather. I pray right now for each of us that you would breathe life over us. Father, where we're feeling fearful, whether where we're struggling to sleep, where things are hard, God, that's what we see, that's what the natural reality we're in, but you're doing a good thing. I pray, come breath and breathe on us. Come breath, breathe on us, God. We, we have bits of decay in us, God. Come and breathe on us now, Holy Spirit. Come and call us back to life. And Father, I pray as well that you might even now mark us with just a hunger, a hunger, Lord, to see your kingdom come. God, a hunger to see the church not stay where it is, to see us take your ground, inherit the land. We are the church. Come and breathe on us. Lord, I pray that your bones, that our bones would rattle together. You'd call us to unity. You'd call us to uh, to be even shaken as and when you want to shake us. So come and breathe on us, God. Come on, come and give us insight as to your reality, your purposes. Lord, would we would we actually be being strengthened in this time? Holy Spirit, there's so much you're wanting to do in this season. Would you use us? Give us an ear to, to hear what you're doing, that we would be part of it. So Holy Spirit, come. And I pray finally, Lord, that there might even be us as a church. We just say we're willing to be shaken in a really healthy way. Blessed are those that tremble before God, whatever that looks like. And much more than just the reality, we want to be changed by it. But Father, we say yes to it. We say yes to you just trembling and shaking us in a really good, purposeful way and doing it for our nation. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We invite you. Stay with us. Keep speaking to us. We need you in this time. Lord, if we've ever needed you, we've needed you now. And we still, we've always needed you. Yeah, so increase your presence amongst us. Send your fire into our presence, into our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, breath, breathe on us, we pray, Lord. Come, breath, breathe on us today.